Hey guys, welcome back. Oh wait, now I'm saying welcome back? It's like my video delayed again, that's so weird. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here. Hope you're all having an awesome day. Bring me the nachos and cheese, a little boomstick action. We are ready to rock. Can you guys believe it? It is almost gonna be Core 2021. We are like right there on the cusp a couple of days away. Um, it, it's funny, I don't know if you guys remember, I um, I did some videos on Ugin the Spirit Dragon back in 2019. I believe, and I think um, it, it, anyway, it had quite a few views because it was my my little idea of how how the card is like. It's it's a, it's a save all. It's it's an amazing game ending card. Yes, it costs eight, but it's colorless, so it fits into any deck without any reservation. Even the new Ugin only costs uh, six. Um, lets you uh, uh, manifest the top of your library or destroy a single target. Those are very good cards, and they're very strong. I always am a very big advocate of anything colorless in a deck. So, Planeswalker just destroys, right? Ugin is a very powerful card. He, he lends himself to a lot of cornerstones of decks. But the idea of reprinting him, um, I have to say, I'm not adverse to reprinting him. Um, I had, a, like, I don't know what, I don't know, 20? I still have like 8 or 10 of them that I use for my decks here, and I have a set of the promo ones. Um, but understand, I, I get it. You know, some people invest a lot of money in these cards and like, hey man, now I'm getting ripped off, I'm losing money. Ah! And I know, I know, it's sad, but it happens. You have to know when to plan your ins and outs. And if you just need the cards, don't worry about the money at all. If you just need a playset, the money shouldn't factor in if you just want to enjoy the cards. Um, at least that's how I see it, right? I mean, I understand, and the game has gotten a lot more expensive over the years. And yes, Hasbro is milking us for the money. Um... And I, I have strong feelings about that. Feelings. Feelings? Feelings. But there's nothing I can do about it. So back to Ugin. Ugin himself is an amazing card. His value is based on that. He actually didn't rise as high as I thought he would, considering how many years it's been since he was last printed. This will cut his price probably about in half. He'll hit the $30 to $35 mark, I believe. Um, it is corset, so there will be a lot of him opened. Uh, so that will, obviously, you know, it'll influx the market with a lot of that card. But again, over the next couple of years, it'll get eaten up. Those extra cards will disappear from people who never got to have it. That lower price will allow more people to jump in and buy some of those key cards, such as Ugin, and, and continue that in, in, in a way that can build their decks up, which is great. It's good for the game. It's good for us. And of course, yeah, it's good for Hasbro. And I have nothing against Hasbro making money, guys. I just wish they would do a few more things to support what's going on. Um, I'm glad to know some of the stores got their free boxes of cards and all that. And my local stores have stayed open. My one up north has stayed open. So I'm very happy that none of my businesses that I support closed. I feel very confident about that. I don't think it's all due to Wizards, but I think Wizards did have a hand in it. So Ugin himself, guys, he's going to drop. He's going to hit that $30 mark. He may even go a little bit lower for a while. So if you're trying to get a few play sets, that's the time to get it. Because he will go back up. These things seem to last about two years, and then they seem to creep back up in price and go back up into the ether of the higher lands after they get eaten up. But that will take time. So in the meantime, when the price is low, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Pick yourself up a playset if you don't have one. Get one if you want to get one. It is totally cool. It's okay to spend a little money if you have money available. Do not put yourself in debt to buy a set of Ugins. And I do like the variations of the sets they have with, you know, the box top or, the, you know, all that. That's cool. And I'll get some. But, but I will not go overboard. Now, it's funny, um, when you think about buying a lot of that card, there's always a threat of reprint. So before you buy a lot of a card and invest a big chunk of money, understand, guys... Um, it's going to get reprinted at some point. That's what they do. As soon as they see something upticking, they do reprint it. They do follow the secondary market. They hey, this card's a lot of money. If we put a set with this card back in it, this is going to get us some money because people want that card. Okay? That's their theory, and that's what they go by, I believe. That doesn't always make it true. Because in the case of Mox Amber, some of us have got a large position of that. We have no intention of selling. We just like having it. If they reprint it, I think they'll be sadly mistaken. Just saying. But maybe they'll reprint it anyway. I mean, it will be reprinted. The question is when. That's all. Guys, Wizards gotta make money, man. They they wanna they wanna just 
gnaw at us a little bit here, a little bit there to get our cash. And that's what they're going to do. And that's okay because we allow them to do it. And we said it's fine. If it's not fine, don't support them and don't do that. Buy the cards you want to get and leave it at that. Don't go overboard. Manage your money. Manage your stuff. Enjoy the game. Get the cards you have to get. I hear barking. My dog is barking. I apologize. Oh, by the way, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe now if you made it this far in already. Go ahead. You're already this deep into the video. Treat yourself to a little bit of the Moxman. Because MTG Moxman likes to party. That's right. So... Let's recap a few things. Ugin. Yes, he is going to drop, guys. He's being reprinted. He is going to drop in value, and some of us will be able to pick up some sets for ourselves or for some of our decks we've never had one before because we weren't going to spend the $80, $90, and you can walk away with that, and it's totally awesome. For those of you who have some, maybe too many, maybe, maybe you've actually invested in the card and you have like 50 60 I'm sorry. You probably just lost a lot of money, and I feel bad for you. Because I know that feeling too. But the good news is, if you can wait in there five years, yes, that was a yawn, it'll be reprinted later on. But there'll be a few years in between where it'll slowly creep back up in price, and that's the time you sell. The, the same is, I, I don't mind going in and selling a card if I'm getting good value from my card from the local store. They gotta make money too, they got overhead. So I've gotta make enough that I feel comfortable and they feel comfortable. So there's nothing saying I can't walk in and sell 10 of something if they need it, if it's on their list, right? And I get to, I'll probably take credit to be honest, and buy a few boxes. Say, hey, I'll turn in some cards and walk away with some boxes that can be my sealed product for later. I got to enjoy opening them because I do a lot of openings, but a lot of times I told you guys, these things just sit here. I don't, I don't look that often. Let me see this one here. Like, okay, here's all drain and this is all foil by the look of it. Everything here is foil. Yeah, looks like it. And I just, I didn't do anything. So I just, I just keep them in boxes. But I'm working on the storage issue. And thank you, Andrew. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much for that email. Um, so I do do it. But a lot of times, yeah, they sit there because I don't need to get rid of them. I like my cards. I like my piles. I like my stacks. I like my craziness that I have around me here because I get to enjoy it. And that's okay does make deck construction sometimes a little bit of a problem but that's okay I can I can deal with the deck construction problems later on and still complete a deck and have a good time it's it just for those of you who have to sell because you got you want to move on to more decks and build, you know I understand that's hard and that's that's not easily done by the way I was going through some uh, some bag stuff today and I found an old baggie as you can tell it's all riddled and dusty it's in some little box thing I thought we'd look through it together. So I'm going to end things off today. Looking at some old magic cards. Um, I haven't looked yet. So I'm going to kind of go quick. Because there's probably a lot of cards here. Uh, obsessive research. One instant, draw a card with madness. You may play this card for its madness cost. If you do, you draw a hand. Just, eh, I don't like that. So. Oh, is it even hard? Compulsive research. Mahamai Dijin. Look at these are older things. Uh, a lantern cami. Got some Kemi Gawa in there. Uh, that's Dissension, I think. Scrag of the Rage Pits. Oh, Secluded Step. Hey, hey. Polluted Mire from uh, uh, Urza Saga. Polluted Mire, Urza Saga. Some more Kemi Gawa. You know what? I'll look through quickly. If I see something cool and old, I will totally tell you. Like Minister of the Elements, Transmute. Oh, look, there's a, there's a hollow. An older hollow. Again, I don't think I think it's from Dissension, Ocular Hollow. I don't think it's worth anything, but still. So it's funny when you see a Surveillance Sprite. Remember these guys? They're one one. They're look Surveillance Sprite. Remember this card, guys? Come on, I'm not getting good zoom on there. No, no, is it working? Is it working? Ah, it was a good card. It had flying. It was a one one. Uh, and whenever it goes to graveyard, you you get to draw a card. Oh man, Pillage, Alliances, great card. Uh, two red, one other. Berry target artifact or land. Oof, that was fun. I'm telling you, man. Sometimes the old stuff. Hey, Whirling Dervish. This is a Chronicles reprint, I believe, or a fourth edition. 95. I think it's, I think it's fourth edition. Look at it. It's, it's two for a one for a one one with protection from black, and put a plus one plus one counter on it at the at an A turn where it damaged an opponent. 
which is cool, man. Some of this old stuff, I'm sorry, some of the artwork, some of the stuff that has it. I don't see any rares here, though, guys. This must have been some pile that I put together because I don't see anything here. Molder, what's Molder? Destroy Target Artifact. Oh, that's from Time Spiral. Just a pile of old cards. I said, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta look through your stuff because odd. I'll be honest, guys. I find stuff, okay? And I find it, you know, buried in the depths of my basement, all over the place, and I have no idea. Sometimes, Chameleon Blur. A lot of them actually. Oh, look at this. A Lithotog. This is. Oh, I think that's Odyssey. Look at that crazy artwork. And I don't know what this stuff is. I go, well, where, where did I have this pile? So I start looking through. Razzing Shield. Right? That's kind of cool, man. But so far, I'll be honest. Ah, oh, Tempest. Segmented Worm. Five for five, five. Whenever it becomes a target or a spell, put a minus one, minus one. That was considered a beast back in the day. Five, five, that got minus one, minus one counters whenever somebody targeted it. Come on. That's eh, horrible. Soul Link, which is, I guess, their version of life. Okay, look at this. This is called Soul Link. It was an enchant creature. Whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. So it's Life Link. Look at what it cost to cast. It was three. It was a, a white, a black, and one other to give something Life Link. Look how far we've come. When you look at that stuff, you're like, eh. Okay, target creature gains Forest Walk until end of turn. Actually, it's not that bad. For a 1 2 creature. A lot of uncommon. I don't see any rares, by the way. So, I'm assuming this big bulk of cards. Oh, Ranger and Vec. One green, one white, and one other for a first strike, two, two, and you can regenerate him. That's actually a pretty good card. He has first strike and regenerate. Where is this guy nowadays? Even for three. You don't see a lot of regenerate now, you notice? They want things dead. They don't want you bringing things back. Okay, enchantment. Martyr's Tomb. Uh... Uh, Marcadia Mask. One black, one other, and two. Pay two life, prevent one damage that'd be dealt to a target creature this turn. Just saying. Not that great. There's Urza with Soul Link. Marcadia Mask as well. It's Urza over there, I believe. It's cool stuff, man. Just find some of the old cards, looking through, talking with you guys on a Tuesday. Oh, I used to use this card. Oh my god. Uh, Jupiter Order Advocate from Alliances. One white, two other, because I used to use a lot of white decks. As long as Jupiter Order Advocate is untapped, all green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. I remember using that card. That's crazy. Some Kvus from Time Spiral. What's this one? Crypt Wailing. That is some cool artwork. Look at that art, man. That is crazy, guys. Who are those surveilling sprites? I must have been fond of that. Frazzle, Vertigo, Systemic. Yeah, no rare so far. You know, actually, I haven't seen any artifacts either. Some more Urza lands. A lot of these come in a tap, come in a land tap, and then they have cycling. A lot of them, though. Oh, I used to use this card. Nip Gillian. Look at this. It was one black, you know, one black or one white. It's a 1-1 one, one with lifelink. And then there was this enchantment, some black-white enchantment that if you had a black and white creature... It gave it plus two, plus one if it was white, or black, sorry, and then plus one, plus two if it was white, but it got both if you did them both. Crazy. Dramatic Explosion. Assassins. Oh, Fallen Ideal. Look at that. Getting fake angel horns, like a Fallen Angel thing. Oh, crazy. I think that's it. Yeah. Empty the Warrens. I remember that card from Time Spiral. Put some Goblin Tokens into play. I think I had Retrace, right? Oh, it has Storm. Storm, sorry. It wasn't a bad card, man. For Kong crazy. Anyway, I thought I'd just share the, the pile of bulk that I found in a, in a little tiny plastic bag. Because sometimes, you just don't know what you're going to find. And there's been that other bag, remember the one that I found last year? The little uh, little thing that had a couple of dual lands hidden away in it? I don't know what I do sometimes, but I obviously don't think things through. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoy our little chat tonight. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on, on stuff like Ugin, guys. I mean, everything gets hit for the reprint list. It's going to happen. Um, shocked if it happens though because that's just how things play out so don't sweat it okay you, you know people lose money you make money um there's some great cards coming up like even that teferi i unless i open a teferi i'm not gonna buy one right away i do believe he'll fall in price i don't think it's gonna be skyrocketing anytime soon. like just look at that thing um 
and understand that that some of those cards, like 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 Teferi, just compared to Urza, uh, 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 what's his name, Scion of Urza, right? But when you look at him, he hit like sixty bucks per card, right? And then he went all the way down to like eight nine dollars. And I still say grab him because you know get some play sets now. He's gonna go up in a couple of years. And I mean, I bought a couple of play sets, so I'll have them and I'll just resell the extras, right? Just keep it in mind, okay? All right, guys, thanks all for tuning in. The MTG Mox, man, thank you so much for spending time with me tonight. And the end comment tonight will be into the pit with him, bloodthirsty sons of moors. All right, little Army of Darkness quote. Cheers, guys. Have a great one.